Good morning, my neighbors! <laughs> Ladies and gents, it's Tuesday, it's Booge, it's you, it's me, it's time for an alternative paper review. <laughs> First up to the Daily Express this morning, who warn the Conservative Party that more Tory MPs will defect to the Reform Party. A warning which is bizarre for two reasons. First, the Daily Express basically is the Conservative Party. Like, all, all they do is print CCHQ approved headlines. That is what they do. It's like, if you've, if you've never looked at the Daily Express before, right, here's, here's their deal, right? It's like somebody has their, their Microsoft Outlook. It receives press releases from Conservative Party central office, like Rishi saves the day. Thank God for Hunt's tax cuts. Boris, I've got a bridge and a blowjob for everyone. And then the Outlook rule, right? That's set up, it stashes it all in a separate folder called Tomorrow's Headlines. And then once it gets to like, I don't know, four or five of them, then it auto forwards all of them to their political editor. And then he gets the notif and he's like, Junior, come here, now look, now that's a story. And then they check it for typos and it, becomes the front page <laughs> that that is it that is the daily express so it is it's weird isn't it that they are warning the conservative party but second it's a bit weird because the election is over there is no immediate need to defect to farage if you saved your job at the last general election then well done why would you ever need to defect now and that's an interesting question isn't it why would you need to defect now? Why is there talk of defecting to reforms? The answer to it, of course, is that there is no real need to defect. I mean, the actual reason why this is on the front page of the Daily Express this morning is not to scare Conservative MPs into not defecting. It's not to expose the schism in the Conservative Party. It's not to report the news. And it's not to promote Clacton on Sea's newest ambassador to Milwaukee, Nigel Farage. All it is, all any of this is, is to threaten and push the Conservative Party into choosing a hard right, far right leader post Sunak rather than the centre right. That is all <laughs> any of this is. Next up to the Daily Mail this morning, now Labour opened the door to 70,000 asylum seekers. Now this is, um, uh, this, this is, this is fiction. That's what this is. This is complete and utter garbage. Now let's get into why, but then also let's talk about why this makes me personally so angry. So the Daily Mail says that since Labour sacked off the Rwanda scheme, 70,000 migrants who were earmarked for deportation will now be offered asylum in the United Kingdom. The implication there is that Labour are voluntarily opening the door, welcoming in, quote, illegal migrants. I mean, they're, they're refugees, actually, overwhelmingly. But I, I don't want to, you know, if you're a male reader, I don't want to overload you right now with all of the misrepresentations. Like we can, we could get into that misrepresentation a, another day. Just, just stay with me on this one for now. In reality, which um, I, don't, I don't think the Daily Mail have a correspondent who reports from there currently. But, but in reality, 70,000 refugees have been stuck in a state of limbo since the Tories shut processing centres, since the unworkable Illegal Migration Act passed in 2023, packed with its legal contradictions, which, you know, if you're interested, like basically, if you're an asylum seeker and you are disabled or gay or you don't have any documentation or you're stateless or maybe the place that you came from, there's human rights violations, so you can't be sent back there. But simultaneously, if you entered the UK illegally, i.e. via small boat, well then, you know, technically, according to that legislation, you can't claim asylum. So where do you go? The answer, of course, was that these people were stuffed into an overwhelmed, underfunded asylum system. And basically, the Tories' incompetence allowed a backlog of 70,000 people to build up. And now the Labour Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper, is like, well, we're gonna... <laughs> we're gonna have to sort this out. But no, there's no open door. This isn't Labour's policy or Labour's mistake. This is the 
unavoidable end game of exploding your asylum infrastructure. Now, why is this so enraging? Because the Daily Mail is a newspaper and these people reporting to you are supposed to be journalists. You know, digging through facts and articles and other interviews and qualifying their theories with documentation, dates and sources. And it took me, just to really hammer this home for you, it took me a goofy, bigged bellend from Hampshire less than two minutes to work out that this was (laughs) horse Two minutes! Meanwhile, the Mail have journalists and editors and sub-editors and researchers. Like, everything is checked. Everything is checked and double-checked before it goes to publication. And yet still, somehow, Labour's open door to 70,000 migrants. I mean, how? How has this ended up being the headline? Oh, are they going to feel silly when they see that they let this one slip through? Over to the sun now. Five faced a char char chop. Uh, veteran Strictly stars facing cull in BBC Row. Now, this is a story that there was a guy called Giovanni who was on Strictly, and apparently he was abusive to women. Uh, not not sexually though. Not not sexually. I know. I know, guys. If- <laughs> Phew! Right? Like, that is how low the barrel scraping has gotten now, isn't it? Is that when there's a story, and I tell you that a man abused a woman, but then I tell you that it's... Actually, there was no sexual abuse. Like, it's... It's almost okay, isn't it? It's like, oh, oh, God. Oh, for for a minute there, I I thought you were going to... I don't even want to tell you what I thought you were going to tell me. But it turns out it was just a a harmless bit of workplace bullying, belittling, misogyny, name-calling. I mean, now now that I've found out it's it's just that, I mean, it's sort of almost a a good news story. Are you like, oh, no, this sounds monstrous. Meanwhile, the general public see a story like this. Yeah, I mean, it could have been so much worse, though. It sounded worse. And now that I know that it wasn't that worseness, well, it's... Relief! And relief is a a good feeling. No, no wonder these women are smiling. I mean, look, the reality of this story is probably the same as the reality of similar stories across multiple industries. You know, there's a there's a man or or there's men, plural, or a few men, and then they treat women atrociously, and it's a, an awful endemic problem that we urgently need to look at socially societally but nobody in any position of power wants to (laughs) to have that conversation whether it's out of fear that they'll be called woke or simp or soy boy or maybe they're worried about their own history being dragged out and then they'll be exposed as a hypocrite but the common denominator here of course is men men in powerful or even sometimes just adjacent roles to women abusing them. And probably the best way of fixing that on a societal level will be an upgrade to our education, to our regulatory space, to our legal frameworks. But no, instead, like, all of all of that, all of the education, all of that is swept aside, and instead what we get is a hyper-focus on the environments, the specific environments in which a particular instance of abuse took place. You know, it's like, oh, look at Look at these bankers. Oh, they went out to strip clubs and some of them hired hookers. Oh, evil bankers. Oh, look at these premiership footballers. Oh, there's there's something really sexist and misogynistic specifically about premiership footballers, guys. Next month, maybe it's Hollywood. It's, oh, what is it about Hollywood producers and directors that makes them such sexual predators? Hashtag me too, hashtag time's up. Until we get to now and it's like, oh, strictly... Strictly has an abuse problem, a culture of looking the other way. Like, I wish there was some way that we could get the word out, you know, that these horror stories, these instances are not the consequence of a particular football team or studio or TV program or bank or producer. Like, it's more of a overarching societal issue. We need to, but how do you, how do you get that message out? I mean, you know, other than 
email it directly to the Express's inbox. The Daily Express, here is a thing that Aid emailed. But yeah, I don't know. Whenever I see headlines like this about a story like this. Five faced a cha-cha-chop, veteran Strictly stars facing cull in BBC Row. I'm always like, I mean, this won't, (laughs) this won't actually change anything. It's not specific to the BBC or to Strictly. And in terms of any like changes or knock-on effects, honestly, like what you're likely to see off the back of this, like you're more likely to see the cast of Strictly moan (laughs) that they're being cancelled by the woke mob and then defect to GB News for a rip-off, like, this Friday night on GB News, Strictly come marching! And then when they get bollocked for abusing all the female staff there, then I suppose we'll blame it on GB News' misogyny problem, or Giovanni, or Labour's open door abuser policy! The Daily Mail's trying to blame the Labour government. They be loving it, but we above the shit. We form trying to lure away Tory MPs, but MCs too damn smart for eating up the shit. Now check it, your politics got infected. Wrecked it, take the far right to a part-time. Defected, your mom's wishing pops got resected. I text 